So, uh, my name is Robert Karitonov. I'm working at the Neglasiki.ru. It's a top 10 world social network. I work as a head of front-end development department. That is why I need to manage uh, many problems during some front-end development processes, not only with the developers, uh, but also with the testers, uh, managers, and other who somehow are involved in this process. So we'll start talking about pain, pain in the different, pain in average human understanding, developer's pain, and a pain like this. So uh, mostly, most of us remember it, but uh, it's good that it's almost gone forever, mostly. But maybe some young designers still could uh, do such a thing in their own way. So let's talk about real life problems, real life pain that we manage uh, to face in our uh, everyday tasks. Uh, the biggest problem for front end developers is a duplicated code problem. It's because of HTML and CSS is very easy to write. It's very easy to write some new instances, and in some parts, it's, it will be easier to write something new. Uh, not just uh, looking for some old limitations. So duplicated uh, code, duplicated HTML is hard to maintain. It could be bad quality because you need to uh, spend many time duplicating, not uh, making good, cool, uh, future-proof stuff. And of course, it's uh, boring. It's not what we like in um, front-end development and development and in IT in. Uh, and average understanding. And what we want to do, what we want uh, in common is to have less shadows and make more fun, make more cool stuff, not just copy pasting uh, some pieces of code over and over again. So another problem is uh, backend developers, uh, for, for us, for front-end developers, uh, when you all know the situation when somebody comes to you and says, hey, I just make here a few changes, can you give this a look? And then you open this code, see some ugly, smelly code, uh, and then you just like, man, stop, just don't try to touch my perfect code, it was so perfect before you came. Just ask me for help, I will do anything for you, just leave my code alone. So, another big pain for us is the infinite redesign. Always websites need to be continuously improved, uh, always must be responsive to user needs. That means that uh, always, almost every day, designers come to us and uh, ask some to add something new, or uh, if some new design trends come uh, to the world. Of course, designers want to redesign everything at, uh, um, as much fast as possible. As possible. So, and the biggest problem is uh, teamwork and collaboration problems. Uh, supporting common code base, we need to share our code, we need to work with our colleagues' code. And sometimes it could be very different, especially working with uh, interfaces that are, aren't documented at all. Uh, also, there's many problems communicating with uh, non-developers, because with developers we could just write uh, good understandable code, leave some comments, and that's almost it. But uh, how could we communicate with designers who just uh, don't read our code? And uh, the problem becomes much more uh, harder, much more painful when we work with uh, freelancers, with external teams, because of uh, lack of responsibility, because lack of uh, passion for the product that you have. Uh, also, there's some idle times when you ask something, you you can't uh, uh, take the answer uh, instantly as you do with uh, your colleagues. So, what's the solution for all those pain? Uh, how can we solve them? At the classic, we tried many services, but the problem is that none of those services aren't specialized to solve complex front-end development problems. Uh, that is why we created Source. Uh, Source is uh, a front-end documentation engine uh, that is born to solve problems with documentation, with front-end development, 
testing and uh, mostly it was born to, to become a common language for all your team, for all team members that uh, need to work somehow with uh, front-end elements, we do need to create something uh, for the browser, for the, for the front-end of your product. And of course, it's open source, that is why I'm telling you about it right now. All uh, is available uh, in already third version, stable version of uh, engine, and it's available on GitHub. Links will be a little bit later on the slides. So first, before we start with the live demo, uh, I will talk to you uh, about rethinking the regular documentation process and how process could be changed with source. So how front-end development process looks today or yesterday before using source. First, uh, when you get some designs from the designer or uh, from managers or from external freelancers team, you took your ID, you start writing code to create, to generate some study files and test them in browsers. Then you need to document it, but most of all, of course, keep this step because, uh, because that's the way it is, because it's no time to document, just always need to continuously improve the code you write and always we stick on the first and second step. And then we push everything to the production to show the code we developed to the world and how this process could be changed with source and how this process is already changed for those teams who are using it. So with source we combined second and first step we don't uh, document after writing code, we write code in the documentation from the start. That means that when you write the last line of your code, the documentation is already there, it's very already available for your team members. Also, at some checkpoints, you can show uh, some, uh, some of your starting, uh, starting code parts to designers to get some feedback from them and uh, as much as uh, as fast as possible to improve some parts to not get uh, some problems in the future. So let's show you how it works and we'll uh, try to we'll document a uh, basic basic element in the source engine. As an example I will took a, a button element from the Twitter bootstrap. Most of all I think you know about it. So how the process that is changing the source is looking like. Here I have a uh, inited source JS engine uh, to get uh, the same state on your side. You need to do some simple steps like uh, checking out project from GitHub and then install and then just uh, use Google to initialize all this thing. And uh, to create new spec in the source, uh, all you need to do is just copy the starting template that is already there, already, already uh, waiting uh, in every source uh, in every source unit that will be done from GitHub. So we'll copy this starting template to our public folder where uh, all templates or all specs are uh, laid together. So We'll create a new catalog, we'll call this base, to not put everything in, uh, in server root to you know somehow to categorize somehow those specs. And we will call our stack as a uh, button because we'll be documenting the button element. So we'll, here we have uh, our stop uh, page uh, with some stop information. We'll change a little bit of this, uh, like title, we'll call it button button spec here and uh, change the title that is shown to the users. So and here's at stop we have a place where we could put our code examples. Uh, here's the element I already created here I will pass uh, this output that I took from Twitter Bootstrap right here uh, on uh, getbootstrap.com. So uh, Let's see how it works, let's see uh, what is already created and uh, how the documentation already is looking like. I will open my local build of source and uh, create a base catalog and button, button spec. 
Now we see that we can have a CSS. Uh, that's a bit of misunderstanding. The thing is with CSS, uh, we don't need to copy paste uh, the CSS, the styles, over and over again uh, from the documentation environment to the production environment. We just uh, once connect our common st styles of the project and it, will, uh, it could be stored at uh, your stuff for your new specs. So once we link all the CSS files with imports and then we have all the whole specs, uh, the same CSS that is connected to your project. Now we'll connect uh, Bootstrap, Bootstrap CSS. So let's check. So here's the styles for the button element. It is the basic uh, button element style with Bootstrap. Let's see some complex, uh, some complex example. Complex example. We'll take a whole button group that must look like this. Uh, Fortunately, this is the first version of Bootstrap, and I have here uh, the that, um, that I have here is the second. So we have some live templates here to just not copy paste the code uh, over and over again. It's just some helpers. Uh, instead, we can just copy paste. Let's call the second section button group like it's called in uh, Bootstrap documentation, and we'll create another example. Uh, like this one, like in first uh, step, like uh, is already created in uh, stop uh, starting template, and we'll paste the HTML here in the new place, a little corner here. So let's see how it works now. Here we see that at our spec page we have uh, added a new section. So uh, now the button is documented, and uh, every time that some of the developers or designers will need to somehow interact with this element. He will start from the source, he will start from this common starting point, and if it's a developer, he will, he will just take some code from here. Here's the functionality that uh, helps us to uh, show the source code, and uh, if the developer does not, does not familiar with some front-end uh, uh, front tools, uh, like inspect element or Chrome, he could just copy it from here or compare the part he is already created. So, uh, and the good part of storing every button state, every module state on the same page is that if you need to test some interface, you could easily open this spec in, uh, in some other browsers or Internet Explorer, for example, and see from the start how your button elements will look like. So, or, uh, taking a more complex uh, example of some front-end code, you can uh, see already from the start, just for just scrolling down to see other examples. Because in other cases, if you develop those uh, new elements already in the production code, you will need to always uh, repeat your scenario, testing scenario, that, is, uh, that, that, that could take uh, quite a lot of time. So, uh, let me tell you how it all is working. Uh, basically, source is a web application that is running on top of your source files, on top of your static files that are enhanced and uh, uh, then on the client side, all, all the magic is uh, happening. So, uh, how it could look like, uh, as we create a new file, you can create any file structure you want on your side, create uh, any folders using uh, only stuff elements and using only some uh, style rules that need to be applied for source engine to work with. Uh, the good part of it is that, uh, the good part of storing all the code on the client side is that you can easily make at backend all the things you want. For example, in the classic our project is written in Java, so uh, we have our own template, templating uh, language Templating engine that is written also in Java and couldn't be run on the client side. So uh, what we do is uh, generating everything on the backend, giving to the browser uh, as the start some basic uh, basic source code, and then it's enhanced with uh, every functionality that I will show you now. 
So we'll open our demo again. Uh, you already saw the, the functionality that uh, could show source code. Uh, it could uh, even show uh, JavaScript source code or any other language. Plus, here you can add any description you want. Uh, talking about already built-in functionality, I will show you uh, functionality that helps to navigate through the, uh, through the main page. Uh, we can see here that we can easily navigate through many sections that are already created on spec. We can fold and fold them if we need to uh, concentrate or on uh, uh, some parts of, uh, of code or uh, just not to see the parts that we need, don't need to work at all. So another big thing is that the search functionality that uh, gives us possibility to search through other specs of our blocks library, not uh, seeing only the button element, not, not seeing only the spec that we uh, took, uh, that we served, served to, through some link that uh, front -end developer gave us to. We can easily search here for some documentation, like here we could go to uh, Gruntasm documentation. So all the documentation of the source engine is already built in, as I said before, right here, and you could easily search through the other specs. So we'll return to our spec. Uh, talking about front-end functionality, that's almost it, but uh, of course it's, uh, it's not all. At the backend side, we also have some custom plugins. One of the plugins is already built in, and uh, now I will show you how it works. It calls Clarify, and it helps to take some parts of uh, code examples and put them to, uh, the, to another context. As we see here, uh, this is another page. It could be uh, looking like your project. It could be looking uh, uh, more simpler, like uh, like imitating mobile layout. So every example that we have documented in the page, we can, uh, with, with this plugin, we can take it to another context for testing uh, responsibility of it or for testing uh, maybe some uh, optimization stuff if we didn't need to source client side code to mess uh, at some tests. So uh, this is the built-in functionality. Uh, we are making the architecture of the source engine uh, like that. Uh, so we're making it uh, as light as possible. That means that every specific stuff, every specific stuff that we have developed at our team uh, isn't necessarily needed uh, to other developers, to other teams who will also use this engine. So at, uh, main project repository, you will have only the main functionality, the main APIs for the plugins you will write, and also there are many plugins that are already created but are excluded by default just because it's a part of our workflow and not uh, maybe not will fit to, to your needs. Here we have uh, a plugin that is called the Bubble. It has a uh, client side and backend side uh, parts of code. I will show you, I will demonstrate how it works. Uh, sorry, I will demonstrate it later when I will show uh, the insights of, of our spec, uh, of our spec pages. So, uh, let's uh, talk about real examples. So, how this engine could work like, how uh, this engine could be fitted in a real project and in a real big project for my Panaclassniki. At Panaclassniki we have many developers and a much bigger code base. Uh, if we we'll talk about numbers, it's about 700 kilobytes of compressed CSS. About 80% of it uh, is new, no, no legacy, almost no legacy code. So uh, you can imagine how many elements could fit into those numbers. And let's see how it uh, actually looks like in uh, our in our team and behind the scenes. So now I'll connect to VPN to get access to our internal resources. So as today's work Friday working day, maybe even even now some people, some people from uh, my team are working with some specs that I will be showing you right now. 
So first I will show you the biggest spec we have. It's a spec for the forms elements. Here we see that there's uh, many, many sections and uh, many uh, modification of uh, forms. That means that every new form that will be developed on, the, on our project will be as a constructor, as a Lego constructor, uh, created from the already existing parts of code, existing parts of uh, UI elements. So this is our biggest spec. Uh, quite a time we didn't update it, it because we just, it's all already there. We don't need anything new because all was developed and now we could just save time reusing it over and over again. So I mentioned a, a comments plugin. Here it's uh, enabled uh, on, on our specs library. And here is how it works. For example, designers who want to leave some feedback, they could do it already here, already in spec. Uh, on the first steps, just saying to, just asking developers to move some pixels, uh, change some font size. This is very useful when uh, developer is developing at the same time at uh, his place the same part of spec. He will instantly see the feedback and put instantly uh, do some changes without waiting before after one day or one week the designers will see and will say that it's all wrong just please uh, uh, redevelop everything and you you are doing another task and it's uh, very it could be very painful to switch over again to previous task and make some changes later. So uh, here how it could work. After saving, uh, the bubble keeps here and is synchronized to all the machines because it's uh, stored in common uh, database. So I will show you another spec. Uh, on the classic view, we are not documenting only the standard elements like forms, buttons, and etc. We are also documenting any interface that could exist, for example, we could uh, a document specific, some specific project, uh, some specific project uh, interface, and I will show you how it looks. So, for example, here's the documentation for the covers functionality that is giving ability to uh, somehow customize uh, user's page. Here we see a catalog, some other views of this catalog, some uh, guides to upload a new skin, and let me show you how it's actually looking like right here, right now, on the production. Here I have uh, opened an opacity website, and here's the, the same page that we have seen on the source. As you can see, the layout is the same, but only here we have our custom data, and uh, when the developer takes what Proton developers are created and uh, uses it for his Java code, he'll just reuse templates we already built in in the documentation, and uh, he could also uh, see any description, any uh, parts of uh, any useful information that could be given with the interface. For example, that. Uh, this interface has some standard elements built in. Don't rewrite it. Just go to another spec, take the button, and just uh, reuse it. Not write your own. So we'll return to the slides. Let's talk about refactoring and legacy code. You may ask, how can you, at your already living project, uh, start building your blocks library and start going to well organized? Uh, structure of interface, interface elements. Here are a few basic steps. First, you need to choose some mythology and uh, code style to start writing understandable code for you at the moment, for your colleagues. To uh, It's like uh, writing uh, on paper and uh, writing stuff so that everybody could understand what you wrote, not just uh, not just that you could yourself to forget after a month that 
what, what was written on the paper. So the next step is to start documenting everything, not only the HTML and CSS, not only interfaces in the source, uh, document as much as possible, as much as you can, document in CSS, uh, Java, JavaScript files, leave as much comments as you can, it's a very good investment to the future. Now you, uh, now you, you will leave some small part of time for writing a little, uh, a little comment, but in the future you and any other developers could save very much time just uh, having this information when they need to have it. So, and uh, the next step is uh, to start uh, start building box library. You can do it step by step, not uh, waiting uh, for first iteration, not, not uh, creating all the elements, uh, not documenting all the elements for the first step. You can do it part by part, creating uh, and documenting only the new elements, or you can uh, take just most commonly used elements like buttons and start documenting with them. And in future, after some time, you will uh, get already well structured, uh, well structured box library. So if you want to change something, just start doing something, not just arguing in the kitchen with other developers saying that everything is awful, no documentation at all. How could we work with it? So uh, here's the uh, link to the project page. There you can find uh, any documentation that uh, already is written, but uh, also at our side we have problems with the documentation of uh, of code of the source. As I said, many people steps uh, skips the step of documenting as we did in the uh, process of creating source, but uh, it will definitely help you to improve your workflow and improve front-end documentation workflow. So let me zoom up a little and uh, we'll see which problems did we solve, which problems did we uh, help, uh, which problems did we uh, know how to solve right now after getting some tools. So first of all is documentation, next is front-end development and its testing. Uh, rethinking some parts of the process helps us to work more productive not only for us, no, not only for ourselves, but working productive for all the team, interacting with designers, testers, and etc. So talking about technologies, uh, all functionality is written in JavaScript, so at front end of course it's only JavaScript and back end there is a Node.js. Uh, we are using many, uh, many popular frameworks that uh, you mostly know about and many more to come. So talking about the future, talking about the future big functionality of source engine is a functionality for auto-testing uh, with Phantom.js. Uh, with it we, we could uh, easily we could easily capture some parts of interface elements and then compare them in automatic way. If we'll do some refactoring we could just run all the tests and see how our specs uh, our specs react to it, to those changes, and if there will be some problems, we will just open the spec in the source and we will see it instantly, or with some, uh, some help from the plugin that will run those tests. Another big thing is automatic uh, documentation generation, but uh, the thing is, it will be not as the main feature because if you start automating something, of course, we will have some lack of functionality, a lack of scalability, and uh, because of main principle of source engine is to be as scalable as it could be, uh, our documentation won't be the most important part of it, but it uh, is also planned, and for some parts of the documentation, it is easier to generate it automatically, no? not writing it by hand over and over again. So, and uh, the biggest plans are uh, interface for fast creating prototype, prototypes using already created elements in our box library. For example, we could give the designers uh, possibility to create some new pages, some new services using the elements that we have already 
in our box library that are already are used on uh, our project. So it's uh, more topic about designing in the browser. So we're also still thinking about it and considering it uh, making most important tasks right now. So uh, that's it. Thank you. Uh, all the questions uh, you could you could ask any questions right here right now, or, or you can uh, write me to Twitter or email. Also, the slides of the presentation I will uh, post them to the Twitter, and you'll get all the links that were in the presentation in your device. So, thank you for your attention.